Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Nine minutes before it is the time. Back to COP and those protests around the M25, which are live and ongoing. We know of at least three locations, and we'll bring you more uh, on that in a moment. But possibly some good news. If you find yourself at the lower end of the income structure, millions of people on low incomes will start to receive payments of £324 into their bank accounts from today as part of a cost of living support from the government. And here with more details is Conservative MP and Work and Pension Secretary Mel Stride, who joins me now. Thank you for coming on. Just give my listeners a little more detail um, how they can expect it, when they can expect it. And if they have concerns, is there some, is there an organisation to which they can turn if they don't see the cash? Morning. Good morning. Well, let's deal with the first, uh, the last question first, Nick. So uh, if you think you were due a payment and you don't receive one, then go onto the internet, go to .gov.uk uh, and you will find uh, the answers there or, or, or the way of taking that up. But what the payments are is that the government is absolutely determined to look after the most vulnerable this winter. And that means for 8 million low-income households, a payment of in total of £650. Half of that has already been paid. This 324 is the second half, and that will be received from today through to the end of this month. So if you don't get it today, uh, do wait, because it may come as late as the 30th of November. But that's for, for 8 million people. It, of course, is part of a much wider, broader uh, set of support measures uh, uh, for others across the economy. What makes a household eligible, Secretary of State? So if you're uh, in receipt of means-tested benefits, so, for example, universal credit, uh, or if you're a pensioner, you're getting pensioner credit, uh, then that would trigger uh, the, uh, the, the, the payment. Eight million people in total. OK, well done. Uh, and this, of course, is also in line with, also with the, the, weather, the um, uh, energy caps as well. I'm, uh, I'm sure you'd want to pay a word on that, what the government's trying to do in that area as well before we move on to other matters. Yes, so on uh, fuel bills, uh, we're looking at what we call the energy price guarantee, which means that for an average family, uh, capping the amount that would be paid at uh, uh, £2,500. But there are other payments that are being made. There are payments through uh, the energy bills themselves. That's £400, and that's universal. Uh, For those in uh, council, uh, in in houses, in council tax band A to D, there's been a payment of 150. For those with disabilities, a further payment of 150. And all pensioners are receiving £300. And in addition to that, Nick, local authorities have what's called a household support fund, a discretionary fund to help people, and that's now risen to a total of 1.2 billion. So we really are putting an awful lot into this. We can't solve all the problems, but we're very much targeted on those that need the help the most. Let's come to other matters. Very much your brief as uh, Secretary of State for Work. You are probably, well, you'll certainly be aware of the demonstrations and protests around the M25 yesterday and the impact that that had on men and women trying to do a day shift. And I have to tell you that, regrettably, they are out again today. It looks like the Dartford Tunnel, not the bridge, the Dartford Tunnel is currently closed and there are other sites around the M25. It does seem restricted at the moment to that particular motorway. Um, This is stopping Britain getting moving, isn't it? Yeah, it's very bad. I mean, we we see it even around uh, Westminster. You know, as I go in and out of Parliament, there are people periodically stopping the traffic. And that's why we have passed uh, some really helpful uh, legislation uh, looking at offences such as public nuisance and tightening up the kind of uh, um, sentencing that can follow from these kind of activities uh, to give the police the tools to intervene and remove people. Now, of course, it is a huge challenge if a lot of people run out and glue themselves to the tarmac. It does take time. Uh, to remove them. But we are very determined as a government to give the police the right tools uh, and the right messaging from government to go in uh, and get on top of these situations. But in the meantime, of course, it is misery for the public uh, as well as economic damage. And I'm not I don't feel overall, Nick, that this is something that's really furthering their cause. I think the public are probably beginning to get really quite sick and tired of it. Something else the public are concerned about, which we'll know more in, what, a little over a week's time or so, there's concern over the triple lock, Secretary of State. Can you give my listeners an assurance that that will stay in place? Um, I, I can't, unfortunately, Nick, comment on whether it will or won't other than to say that as the Prime Minister has always made very clear, pensioners are a priority and always have been 
uh, for my uh, party. But because we're going into a major fiscal event, which is the budget on the 17th of November, it wouldn't be right. Uh, in fact, it would be very wrong for any minister to start going out and uh, revealing decisions that are being taken and were going to be announced by the Chancellor uh, at that fiscal event. So I'm not in a position, I'm afraid, to okay. say one way or the other whether that or indeed the uprating of benefits by uh, inflation will feature uh, within those announcements. I wish I could, but I'm not All in right. a position to do so, I'm afraid. Well, let me run the front page of the Times by you. You might be better placed to comment on that. Welfare and pensions set to rise with inflation. Rishi Shunak expected to increase that and make that announcement. Can you give us any word on that, Secretary of State? Well, I can't comment on press speculation. I mean, the, the, the bulk of it has been suggesting that, that there won't be uh, a, a triple lock going forward, but that, that one takes a different view. I mean, p people are opining in different directions, and I'm afraid I just can't comment on press speculation. Got a view on climate campaigners suggesting the United Kingdom should pay some £1 trillion in reparations for damage they claim has been caused, climate control, climate change, uh, also, of course, being pushed forward by Labour's Ed Miliband. Yeah, so th this is something that would have been discussed uh, by the Prime Minister and, and the, the, the UK delegation at the uh, COP27 uh, meeting. Uh, there are ongoing uh, discussions, but I think the main thing to really focus on here is that the UK is already very much uh, leading when it comes to assisting uh, other countries uh, adapting to climate change. And in fact, the money that the UK is putting forward to climate at, uh, towards climate adaptation has just been tripled. Now, that's a very recent announcement. So I think we're already doing a lot in that space. But my understanding is that discussions are on, ongoing at, at the moment on, on the specific issue that you've raised. Finally, you were a government whip. Indeed, you served under two different prime ministers, David Cameron and Theresa May. So you must have been pretty good at it. If we turn to Sir Gavin Williamson, when you were in that role, would you have ever suggested to someone that they should slit their throat or jump out of the window? Absolutely not. Um, uh, there's no justification for saying those kind of things, and it's not something uh, that I would have said. Does it seem in keeping with the bloke? I speak of Sir Gavin. Um, well, I, I think an important thing here, Nick, and it's a sort of fundamentally British thing, really, isn't it, is that we should allow due process and fair process to uh, take its path. And uh, Gavin Williamson uh, is subject now to an independent, and it is an independent investigation by uh, the Conservative Party into a complaint uh, made by former Chief Whip uh, Wendy Morton. Um, and with that ongoing and with that independent process happening, I think we should not prejudge that and I think we should take a step back let that take its course it will come uh, forward I've no doubt with some very firm conclusions and at that point uh, I think it's uh, more appropriate to start addressing that question as to what was right what was wrong what actually happened and what the consequences should be. Welcome Pension Secretary Mel Stride appearing here on LBC grateful for your time Secretary of State thank you uh, that's £324 coming your way if you have any issues go to gov.uk to find out uh, why there might be uh, any help that you require. Let's go back to the M25. Literally, Alex, you're on it. Which bit? Morning. Good morning, Nick. First time call, a long time listener. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, I am on a junction uh, just before junction uh, 21A, I am 